going into a new computer art tutorial here and what we're going to get into today is creating some fake food and so I've taken the image of Brax candy corns and we'll look at my Google image search for the original here so you have Brax glass candy corn and I've taken it and put it into Pixlr and created a new label of old ads classic corny jokes and even included a nice corny joke at the end at down to the bottom here in the fine print why didn't anyone laugh at the gardeners jokes they were too corny also kind of threw in an image of corn in here too um, just for fun all right so let's go into how to uh, start to do an edit on a candy packaging or any packaging of any food that you want to try so uh, let's go ahead and do a Google image search for what you want to work on I'm going to copy this image then go back to my Pixlr tab I'll click back to home to uh, start this up again we want to be in Pixlr E we'll click create new go full HD and I'll call this one fake food click create and then command V to paste in my image and then I'm just going to stretch it out to fill my canvas space then take the crop tool and just pull in the sides of this so that they line up with the edges of my image that I'm editing and then hit apply all right, so now I'm ready to start my work. So um, parts like changing the brocks here is pretty easy. I'll go over how to kind of start that first. And then parts where you're trying to edit out text that has a gradient behind it can be a little more challenging. And so I'll go over that second. But really for this part with the, um, the brocks, all you want to do is cover those over and then you could put new letters there. So I'm going to add a new layer, an empty layer above my image layer. And you could do this a couple ways. You could either take your marquee tool, if it happens to be a rectangular area that you want to just put a different color over. I'm going to take my eyedropper tool and then select this same black here and then go to my fill bucket and then just fill that space in. And then hit Command D to deselect. And then I could go back later and put any letters I want here. Um, you could also use your lasso tool to basically do the same sort of thing. right? I'm just selecting around this letter and then I'll take my eyedropper tool, select this orange color that I want to fill it with, and then fill in this space with the same orange color. Command D, and then as you can see, I could go through and add in my own text later um, with whatever words that I want to put in here. All right, so let's skip over because I think you could kind of uh, imagine how the rest of that would go. And I'll do, I'll finish it off later, but. Um, so if you want to change or take out text that's uh, over a gradient, um, this will have a little added, added uh, challenge to it. So I'm going to take my lasso tool and try and get really close around the edges here. What's really nice about working on this particular label is that this text doesn't actually overlap like any of the other graphics in the label. Like if it went over some of these edges of the candy corns and stuff, uh, it would be a little more challenging to work with. Um, but, uh, you know, if there's a flat color in the back there, like, like with these spaces, um, some labels just have flat colors, really going to be easy to work with. But um, So first I took this out, right, Command D to deselect, and now I have to try and fill in or blend this in with the same gradient. So you could attempt to just make a new gradient that matches these colors. And so if I click on the gradient tool, and then click over here to uh, do my gradients and then choose these colors. So if I want my starting color to maybe be uh, this orange that's kind of on the top edge and then, um, whoops, yep, so I want this top the orange along the top, I'll say okay, and then go to this ending color and I want it to be more of this orange down here. Click on this box and then bring my cursor out here and click on this orange, I could say okay. And now this color could be pretty close. Let's see how it works. I want my starting click to be on the top, bottom click to be on the bottom. Whoops. So that filled in uh, the entire page, which is not quite what I wanted to do. Um, I could put it underneath. Let's give that an attempt and see. That actually worked pretty good. Um, I'm going to undo it and then just start a little higher and bring it all the way down um, just a little lower. And that worked out pretty well. Um, so that's that's going to work. It's behind my image. So if I zoom out, you'll see you shouldn't see it too much. But we do have some spots where we could blend along the edges here. And so what I might use for that is either my clone stamp or my um, uh, healing brush. 
So healing brush you can kind of use to blend over some of these areas. Let's just see what happens when I start to click on these. Um, I kind of want to, oops, Command Z. Doesn't look like those are blending well. I think what I'll want to do is actually merge these two layers together and let's give that a try. So I'm gonna merge down so that those two layers ended up merged together. And now I'll try using my healing brush along this edge here. And you'll see that the healing brush kind of blends where those two areas um, were different kind of together a little bit better along the edges. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I am going to add new text over the top here, which is going to hide some of the imperfections and things like that. So anyways, uh, I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit here. So now I want to add in my new text. So I'm going to go to my type tool, uh, click to add a new text layer. And I wanted to have the text uh, corny. And then on the next line, jokes. And so now what I want to do is this text should be white. Uh, so I'll change the color of the text to white. Say OK. Uh, check my typo here. And so now what I want to do is kind of try and match this font up with the original font. And you may not be able to find the exact font. I'm just going to uh, squish this uh, text box so that it's not like a lot bigger than it needs to be. Just going to shrink that down there. And so now I want to start looking for fonts. Like I said, I already kind of knew what font I was going for. You know, it's kind of like a fun, kind of a bold font. And so I'm going to try and match it. But again, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, if you find something that's pretty close, here in Pixlr, then that should work. And the font that I had used before was this one called Game On. So it was kind of just a fun font that I think works in this particular instance. Again, it's not the exact same font, but not too big of a deal here. So now that I have the font chosen, um, what I want to do to add some of the extra effects, because if I look back at the original, um, you have like a red outline and then you have a yellow outline and then maybe even some shadowing going on below it. So we'll want to make some of those edits. First, I'll add an outline. Um, so if we go to styles here and then I hit outline, I can choose what color outline I want to have. And for this, I wanted kind of like this darker reddish color. Um, I can sample it from here if I want to actually try that and then hit OK and see what that looks like. It looks pretty good, but I think I may want it just like a little bit darker so that it kind of stands out a little bit more. Um, that works OK. I'll just maybe make it just a little more on the red side. All right, cool. So I got that original yellow outline. And then if I want to add an extra outer glow or a drop shadow, I'm going to have to rasterize this text. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is go to layer at the top, I like getting rid of the ads, uh, layer at the top, and I want to rasterize this text element. Okay, um, the nice thing I can do now is I can, if I want to resize this to make it fit or anything, I could just shrink it kind of like this. I don't have to actually like play with the real font size and stuff, which can be kind of a pain to keep changing the numbers on that. Um, but now I can add filters. So I go to outer glow here, and I can click outer glow, um, choose a color. Um, I want it to be kind of like this yellowish color over here. And then I'll say OK. And then I want to make the size come down a pretty good amount. And that looks pretty good as far as size goes. Feathering is the amount of fade that it has. Um, so turning that up was kind of going to make the outline or the outer glow a little smaller. Um, so that color looks pretty good. Maybe shrink it just a little bit more. And then the other thing I wanted to add was a little uh, what's called drop shadow. So filter again, go to drop shadow, um, bevels, maybe something else you want to add to to your uh, text. If you have kind of like 3D popping out kind of text, I know some um, text uh, labels have that kind of too. But drop shadow, I can move the offset and that will kind of make the dro little drop shadow, which just kind of helps to make it seem like this text is really um, meant to be there. Right? So a little bit of drop shadow is kind of a nice touch, um, and that's looking pretty good. So again, I uh, also in my example uh, had kind of added an image of corn, a corny joke down here, old dads in here. I'll keep going with this and just kind of finish it up so you can see the full process. But I think, you know, at this point, you may be able to uh, put together the pieces as far as what's really happening with the rest of your assignment. But like I said, just going to kind of press through 
and finish out my example here. So I want to make sure I go back to this layer here. Layer 3 is where I was filling these colors in at. Um, yep, there we go. Uh, so I'm going to continue filling the rest of these using my marquee tool and just kind of covering these with uh, selection areas and then using my um, color picker to get the colors to match and then take my fill bucket and cover over it. So again, if you have a label where it's just like a flat white color or something and text in the center of it, it's going to be really easy to do that one. Um, but if there's gradients in there, kind of like this one had uh, behind it, can be a little more challenging. But as you can see, not too, too challenging. Just adding a gradient that matches uh, was able to do that pretty quick. Um, clone stamping tool might also be a tool that you'll want to use. Um, I'm trying to get my color picker. That's right. I'm just kind of lost track there. And then I want to fill this in. All right. I ended up leaving the S because uh, I happened to come up with this in a way that would work um, with keeping the S because it's old dads. So uh, now I'm going to create another text box here. Each one of these letters in the old dads part ended up being its own text box. So just the letter O here. Um, I want to make sure that the font color is a white. If I want this white to actually match um, kind of what's going on with this text too, I can use my color picker here to make that text uh, color match the same as the other letter. Um, because you don't always want them to be a perfect white color. Oops, Command Z. Um, you kind of want them to be a little bit of an off-white color sometimes which will match you know, the color of the picture a little bit better. If things are too bright, they might seem like they aren't really supposed to be there. So I'm going to keep adding just a different text box for each one of these because the layers, um, the way these boxes are kind of lined up, um, they don't quite all line up correctly. So I want to make sure that I can make these kind of line up so that it looks like the original packaging. So I'm going to take this and move this over. Oops, it keeps trying to squish this. I think I need to click off the side, and then I can put these on. Oh, I guess I'll have to change the color of this one in order to see it. Um, but let's take my type tool. Oh, yeah, color here, uh, white, and then put that there. I could also just duplicate this one if I want to uh, duplicate a layer. And then move this over here in order to do the other D. And then I need a couple more uh, text box layers here with an L and an A. Again, at this point, you may have already put together what you are going to need for your project. Just following through to the finishing touches for mine here. All right. And then I could actually duplicate this layer again. That might make it a little easier. So I don't have to make another text box. And then just move it over. And then um, just double click in it. And then change the letter to A. And that works there. All right. And then I also kind of copied this asterisk uh, here as they kind of use it as um, an apostrophe. And so I'm going to use my lasso tool and just kind of like pull that out, copy and paste it. So I'm just going to go like really kind of try to stay close around this star to use it as an apostrophe over here next to ol. Because ol dads should be an apostrophe. So I'm going to hit command C to copy that. And then let's see, I can probably put it on this layer, I think. Command V to paste. Yep, and that should work. I'll move it up here to be the apostrophe next to ol for ol dads. And kind of these um, orange box letters should be a little slightly lower than the black box letters because they're kind of like zigzagging a little bit. So I may just move these two Ds up. All right, coming along pretty good. Like I said, I did throw in the, uh, the image of corn here too, so I could go over that really quick as well. Uh, corn, just going to do a quick Google image search. You know, find a basic image of, you know, corn cob. You know, something with a white background is going to be easy to uh, edit. So I'm just going to copy that. Command V to paste it. I can take my magic wand tool here, click in the white area, hit delete. Uh, Command D to deselect. 
And then I could take this image, uh, scale it down. I could put several corn cobs in here. I could just copy paste them, you know, if I really wanted to. A little extra, but. And then, uh, yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Um, the other thing that I had it added in as kind of a finishing touch was the, uh, the corny joke along the bottom. And you could probably figure out how to add that. It's a, uh, you know, simple text box adding a corny joke along the bottom. But there we go. There's a process on how to create fa uh, fake food um, out of any uh, particular image that you can think of changing up. So hope you guys have fun and get creative with your own fake food assignments.